Hello, your girl only read one physical book this month and she didn't go through the entire audiobook that she was listening to. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's start this TBR and wrap up with just one book to talk about. <laughs> Um, anyways, I was listening to The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and I'm still listening to it. It's an 18 hour audiobook. I am only through about, I want to say, I, I think I've gone through 10 hours and I have about 8 hours left. And then the physical book that I read this month was Hard Boiled Wonderland and The End of the World by Haruki Murakami. Now, anybody who knows or has watched any of my book videos will probably know I'm a huge fan of Murakami. I actually really enjoy his works, and this is one of the last books that I had to read. I still haven't read um, Killing Commendator, but yeah, I have that in hard copy, and with hard copies, I always struggle to pick them up, but I have to soon. And yeah, I read this book, and I read it as a part of my book club, which is the only reason I truly really believe is the only reason I went through it, because I made a promise to myself that if I'm not enjoying a book, I'm gonna say goodbye. It's just, there's just too many books in this world to, you know, that I want to read, to force myself to read something I'm not enjoying. Anyways, I'm going to talk about this in length, at length today because I don't have anything else to talk about. I only read this, but we will, at the end of the um, kind of video, choose what I'll be reading next month and you're going to help me decide. But yeah, let's start with this. So this book, if it's very similar, if you have read to uh, Kafka on the Shore, in the way that there are two stories happening at the same time and you're following each chapter you basically with each chapter go from one story to other so it's like one story one story and you get the point and both these stories okay by the way there are spoilers here few not too many but mostly it's me speculating things um the i'm just gonna give you like what the characters who the characters are so the book starts off with this guy in a lift and he's going somewhere for work and while he's going on the lift he talks about basically how he's able to separate his mind into two parts and use them independently and then he gets off the lift and there's this girl guiding him to wherever he needs to go to finish his job and while he's walking he's talking about her being chubby now this whole book doesn't have any names for the characters i don't know if this chubby thing was just so that the girl could have the name the chubby girl because there was the librarian the professor him he was just the guy the protagonist so there wasn't anything to describe people like no names maybe that's why murakami bought this like description of a chubby girl but the thing is like i have been able to enjoy murakami's books despite the fact that his interpretation or depiction of women not interpretation depiction of women in his books is so mind-blowingly horrific like oh my god what the hell are these characters but so are his male characters it's almost like he created the, creates these blank characters with so few to go on that anyone can put themselves in any character maybe it's like what they say about these manic pixie dream girls like or um anastasia Steele in um 50 shades of gray that she was such such a blank canvas that any girl could project herself onto it and i feel like most of his characters are, are like that but this book like i just couldn't get over the fact that the whole thing started with him calling a girl chubby and that was basically her entire personality in the book i did not like that but other than that the two stories so one is hard boiled wonderland which is this very science heavy part of the book so if you're someone who doesn't really enjoy science fiction you might struggle and the other part is fantasy which is the end of the world and hardball wonderland follows the story of a guy who's very easygoing he is a calcutech that's his job but in his like normal life he listens to jazz music drinks a lot of whiskey that's him but his job is very interesting because he basically codes not codes using his brain shuffles not shuffles what is the word he basically processes numbers and data and he helps like encode it encrypt it i guess that's the word and uh, yeah it's very high security job he works for an organization to help them protect data that's his job and in this particular job that he's going and he meets the chubby girl he's actually working for her grandfather who wants him to code some data from here on you just follow the story of this young man and the scientist who is the grandfather and their story the other side of the story which is end of the world is basically a fantasy where this man finds himself in a place a town which is surrounded by a wall a very high wall no one can escape when you enter this town your shadow is cut off from you and here he meets a librarian and his job is to read dreams so he basically imagined this is a skull he holds the skull and he reads dreams that's his job 
Now, I know that all of this sounds really crazy and stop here if you think this book is sounding interesting and you want to read it, read it. But if not, you just want to know what the hell this is about, I will give you my interpretation of it. So basically, it's you now and you in the future and there is no connection between the two. And they're kind of separated in a way and the whole time they're kind of trying to meet with each other. That's one interpretation of the two books. And the second theory I had, which I believe more, is that it is him receding into his own subconscious. So whatever his world is, whatever the life he's living, and the fact that he's basically a robot or a puppet under this whole system, it makes him kind of recede into his own subconsciousness. So he has created this whole world inside his own head that he escapes to. And when he's escaped into it, there is another him living there. And then there is the surface level him kind of continuing his life and doing all his work. So if the surface level him and the subconscious him are two different people living their lives and they have no kind of knowledge of each other, that would work out well. But at some point they do have knowledge of each other. And at some point they have to decide if they want to kind of reconnect, if the real him living this everyday life wants to connect with the mind or the part of him that has feelings and emotions and that part of him that wants to escape the life he's living, do they want to meet or do they want to continue living separately and have separate subconsciousness and all of that. And the book finishes with him, his subconscious deciding that he doesn't want to reconnect with his real self. His mind kind of wants to continue living ba at the back of his mind without having anything to do with his real self. And all of the scientific jargon and all of that aside, I simply think the book was about how difficult life can be and how much some people are like most of us have this wonderful imagination in our head of this wonderful life that we could potentially live and how we want to escape into that world. And he did manage for his to detach his mind from what he is currently and live in that world. And when he finally finds himself in this fantasy world, the whole time he's like, oh my god, who am I? Where is my kind of memories and what, what kind of life did I have before? And it's kind of him deciding that there is not much he can do about how his life goes in the real world. So he's just kind of deciding to stay in this fantasy world. And a lot of people say that's basically him dying and him deciding that he doesn't want to continue living in the real world. But I think it's but I interpreted it as someone who wants to continue living in this dream fantasy world that he has built for himself. And he's happy with just being kind of a soulless vessel on the outside and just living in his dreams the way he wants to without having to give much of him to the real world. And yeah, that's how I saw it. I thought the message was very beautiful. Did I enjoy reading the book itself? Um, I would say no, this is probably by far my least favorite Murakami book that I read because the process of reading it was really not all that fun for me. Um, also, because I read two fantasy books this month, I was very, I was struggling so much to get through them, which maybe proves that um, everybody has their preference for genres and it, may, it perhaps is not my genre. But it wasn't a horrible book for anyone who's read a Murakami book and thought this is really not my cup of tea, I would recommend reading this because maybe I think this will be liked more by people who don't really like his magical realism parts because this is more fantasy. Um, and yeah, that's that's all. But next month I have three books that I want to read from. Pachinko by Men Jin Lee. I have been wanting to read this for a while. Um, the Secret History by Donna Tartt. Should I read the second Donna Tartt book? And then I kind of thrift shop. So please vote, leave them down below which book should I read. I am leaning more towards this. So if no one comments and no one says anything, I'm gonna go for this. But if you guys think I should do a different one because you want me to talk about a different one, then leave it down below and I will pick that. Anyways, today is the 31st and I'm only starting reading this maybe on the second or third. So yeah, if you guys can let me know as soon as possible which one I should do next. I just need a bit of help. I don't know which one I should go with. Also, the thing about this one, people say that Jay Rubin, he's a better translator and his books are more fun. Whereas ugh, this translator, Alfred Bern Burnbaum, apparently his books are not as enjoyable. Now, I don't want to have a go at any translator. I'm sure translating is one of the hardest jobs in the world, in the world because you have to basically get the message and the story across, but also keep the person's tone of voice and the messaging and the way, it's a very complicated thing. So I don't wanna have a go at him. And I don't know if it's true, but I will say that this book was perhaps 
may be more enjoyable if you read it in Japanese and you understood and you read it at the time when it was written it felt very timely for the time of when it was written the very technical parts I perhaps would have enjoyed it more if we were not living in the world we're living in today but that's all for today I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one bye